Okay, I think we'll uh, get started. We're on time for this morning. Uh, welcome to another webinar from the CIA Ops. This one is Document Libraries in Depth. My name is Robert Crane. My email address is director at ciaops.com. You can find more about my business at the website www.ciaops.com. So the first thing I need to check, because this is a webinar, is to make sure that everybody on the line can hear me. Um, we've obviously commenced the webinar. If you're having any trouble with the audio, please change your status so that I can see. Make sure that there are not any major issues at my end. So uh, looking at the list of attendees, it appears that nobody has an issue, so uh, let's kick off. So let's just cover a bit of housekeeping. Firstly, um, I'd encourage you to Twitter about this event. That can be done by the hashtag hash CIAOps. If you want to follow me via Twitter, you can do so. My handle is director CIA. And for those of you who uh, fill out a, an evaluation form at the end of this webinar, we'll provide you with a resource guide and information about that will be at the end of the webinar. So let's have a look at the agenda for today. Uh, again, it's focused on SharePoint document libraries. What we'll do is we'll cover initially the basics. We'll look at the different views of a document library, how to create them, how to modify them. We'll then look at making changes to the document library, how we can modify the look, the feel, and also the securities. We will then look at how we enable versioning and what that brings to a document library. We'll then cover some other information and finish off with a conclusion. So let's start off with the basics of a document library. What we'll cover here is we'll look at firstly the navigation, how to get around. We'll look at how document libraries give you the ability to sort and filter your information. We'll also look at creating and uploading documents, how you actually get documents into your document library. Once they're in there, we obviously need to know how to edit those documents, how to make changes to them. We'll look at how to administrate it, how to add and delete, and also assign securities and change properties on files. OK, so let us swap across to um, the remote desktop so we can uh, view that. So here you should now be able to see my SharePoint site. This is the front page here. Uh, we have a number of items displayed. You'll find document libraries basically by default under the documents heading on the quick start menu on the left hand side here. So I've got at the moment two document libraries. Uh, one is policies and this other one is a knowledge base which in effect is a wiki. So let's go into the policies document and have a look at what a document library actually looks like. So by default, what we've got here is we have the title, um, an icon for the file type, and also the name of the file, the date it was modified, who modified it, and its approval status. In this reason, we're displaying approval because we have a versioning and content approval turned on in this library. That's not normally on by default, but we have it on in this library. So again, what you can see here is that a document library can support multiple file types. So here I've got Word, here I've also got PDFs. I can basically upload any file type into a document library, whether it be a picture, an Excel file, uh, access database, or even an executable. Uh, generally, like I said, a document library is like a file, a folder on your network system. So again, you can put basically any sort of files that you want in there. Now above and beyond what you would get with a normal file system, you firstly see that one of the powers of the document library is its ability to sort information. So if I click on the title here and click on it once, you'll see a little arrow appear next to the word title and you'll notice that my documents or all the entries in this library have now been sorted alphabetically. So obviously a through Z. If I now click that title again, you'll see that it's now sorted them in the opposite direction from Z to A. And again, I can do this by clicking on any column. So if I click on the type, you'll see now it has sorted the types via 
PDFs and via Word documents. So again, I can easily and quickly click on any field and a field heading and I can sort the information that's in there. So even more powerful than that is that we can actually what's known as filter the information. We can choose to view only a subset of the information that's actually residing in the document library. So what I'm going to go over here is, is I'll look at the type and you'll see that when I go over the type field, if I go to the right hand side of it, you'll see that there's a pull down arrow. So if I select that pull down arrow, you'll see that it produces a menu. On that menu, the first two items that I've got are the options that I get by clicking the heading of the title, ascending and descending. But you'll notice further down here that I also have the ability to filter based on the document type. Okay, so in this case I have three document types in my document library. A doc, a docx and a PDF. So if I want to create, apply a filter so that I only see PDF documents, I simply select the PDF option. Now you can see the display of my document library only displays something that matches that filter. With the filter enabled, you'll notice that right next to the filter and right next to the field which is being filtered, you'll notice there's a little filter symbol. Okay, so again, what I can do is I can pull this down. I can select uh, different filters. So if I only want to see doc files, I simply select that. And now you'll see that my display shows only dot doc files. Now this doesn't mean that the documents, the other documents in the document library have magically disappeared. They're just not being displayed. So again, to show you that they're all still there, I can pull this down and I can select to clear the filter type. And again, all my document types are back here. Now not only can I apply a filter to a single field, so again if I go back to PDF, and I may be able to go over here and I might say that I only want to see files, let me just for example pick a field that's in use, okay so I can't do that, so let me just unfilter that, let me go back to docx, see if there's another option, there's no option there for docx, let me go to doc, doc. okay so again I can actually, can't do it here because I haven't got enough variation in the fields, but I am able to filter on multiple Field. So again, if I go back to clearing the filter type, I can set my filter here to, for example, draft, and you'll see I've only got one. If I now change this and set it to approved, you'll see that I've got PDFs and Word documents. But if I now set a second filter on this field and make it PDFs only, you'll see that I now have a filter set so it only displays approved and also PDF documents. Okay, so again, it's easy to apply filters ad hoc to your document library simply by pulling down the menu that appears on the right hand side of the column header. Okay, so again, the important thing here is, is that not only can we filter our information, but you'll notice up in the top right here, I also have a search option. So I can choose to search this entire site, so the entire SharePoint site, or by default I'm only going to search this list. So for example, if I put in here that I want to search for the word opportunity, and I select go, you'll then notice that the results it returns here are obviously a document with these names, but you'll also notice here on my second entry that the word opportunity doesn't actually occur in the heading, it actually occurs within the body of the document. So what SharePoint is able to do is for document types like Word, Excel, PDFs, it's actually able to search within inside the document to find the information that you're after. So this again makes